Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you could see it and you could purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing one of my favorite watches of any class, category, brand, or description. The Cadillac of dive watches in rich rose gold. This is the Blancpain 50 Fathoms. The reference 5015 that first bowed back at Basel World 2007, and 12 years later the watch still feels fresh. High grade materials, finish, enduring design, and real historical roots in the origin of the dive watch make this one of the great model families in the business, and iconic not just for Blancpain, but for watch collectors generally. 45 millimeters, it's a big watch on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, and you get a good sense of the watch's overall span when you view it down the barrel like this. And this is where it's gonna surprise, because the watch is only 50.2 millimeters from lug to lug, meaning even though my wrist is 16 centimeters circumference, I'm wear in this watch quite easily. The case is large, but the lug to lug span is not. The watch is 15.5 millimeters thick, and if you look at the lug spacing, that's where you can see that this is a very modern watch with a 20 mil 23 millimeter spacing between the lug, I should say. It has a nice broad planted stance that's proportional to the size of the case. It's also very substantial. There is simply a lot of rose gold here. Let me get a bit closer. We'll take a look at the accessories right here. The strap is a highlight of every 5015 equipped with the cell cloth strap. Very durable textile, as you can see. It's a sort of black gray, let's call it anthracite, with a little bit of bolstering to give it body. You can see that there's a monotone stitch. There's also rubber beneath the strap. This rubber underlay is there to prevent the somewhat coarse material from aggressing against your wrist. It's also there to separate the oil, moisture, sweat, and grit of the wrist from the material to further prolong its service life. This can easily be a half decade strap. You'll appreciate that there are hex screws used to fix the bars that retain the strap. So no spring bars here. It's a bit more expensive to manufacture, but it's far more secure on the wrist. And then finally, a simple rose gold Blancpain pin buckle. Easy to adjust on the fly, appropriate for a sporting watch. The case is remarkably ornate. As you can see, it's all of high polish, but the details are fine. The sharp break between the lugs and the case band is evidence of outstanding hand finishing. And you can see how it's somewhat bowl shaped, so it rolls down from its edge to its base. It's a bit thinner where it contacts the wrist than it is where the bezel meets the sapphire cap. And I should mention that there is a sapphire cap on this bezel. This was something we first saw on the 50 Fathoms back in 2003 with the 50th anniversary watch. And because we have a sapphire cap on the bezel, everything underneath is shielded from scratches, so the bezel can be completely loomed. But it's more than just a way to extend the loom and protect the watch from scratches. Because there is a cambered sapphire rather than the flat sapphire we've seen, for example, on Bremont Supermarines or even... IWC Aqua Timers. This camber gives it the look of a far more expensive component, almost as though there were a perpetual dewdrop bending the light over the bezel. It's a gloriously good looking watch. Move to the dial and you can see quarter Arabics, 12, 3, 6, and 9. The indices, the hands, the quarter Arabics, all of them in rose gold. The dial has a sunburst galvanized center and then a satin finished hour ring, and you can see that there is a sharp break between them. It's not evident from all angles, but it's a nice piece of nuance and attention to detail. The watch uses a date down at approximately 430 and I actually like that as it doesn't replace a numeral or an index. Broad sword style hands that come to a deliciously tapered point and then a crown guard structure with an enormous 1950 style big crown profile. So you have those sheer guards, but you also have an enormous crown with deep knurling that makes it easy to grip even if your hands are wet, sweaty, or gloved. The bezel detent is excellent. Let's have a listen up close. It's sharp, it's precise, it lets you line up the luminescent index with the minute hand. Now you have an impromptu zero to 60 minute timer that I find easier to read, especially at night, than a traditional chronograph because it's just easier to read a minute hand against a full gradiated scale. And even better when that scale is fully loomed. Case back, solid gold, 
One of the advantages of not having a display case back is that you get more precious metal. The watch is heftier and inherently more valuable as a result. Also, anti-magnetic, because there is a soft iron inner cage around this movement, just as with a Rolex Milgauss, it is highly anti-magnetic. That is why there is not a display case back on this watch. The caliber is the 1315 automatic winding, five day power reserve, three mainspring barrels, free sprung, 35 joules and adjusted in a remarkable six positions, one more than a standard chronometer. These easily run one second a day when regulated. Of course, the three barrels ensuring excellent timekeeping from full wind to minimum wind. And the watch has both stop seconds and a quick set date. So this five day power reserve protected down to 300 meters by the screw down crown and the screwed in case back. It is a high horology movement with high horology finishing. Satin graining, chamfer, perlage, black polished screws, all of that. So while you can't see it, it's present and correct. The ultimate mark of integrity, beauty that you can't see. See this one and make it yours on the watch box. Blancpain 50 Fathoms, the real deal.